Have you ever used the Fanspo mock draft, Henry? I have not. All right. Welcome to today's mock draft. A little different. Luke, get over here so you're not Don't we in the face. Now, we, what we're doing here is a mock draft. We have here Henry Weinberg of Rotowire. Anything else you want to shout out? No, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and you got we got the legal eagle right here himself, Luke Premier's uh How's it going? Just college basketball fanatic. No, follows college basketball way harder than I do just because I personally just watch prospects. Being a degenerate gambler on college basketball is fun, man. And we got Henry over here who is a scout himself and a writer. So, so. We are the war room. We're the war room. We're the, the war room. Yeah, that's yeah. basically what we're doing. That's how we did it last time. That's how we're doing it this time. So like and subscribe. Let Excellent. us hear your thoughts. Go check out everyone's links in the description and let's go right into it. Who do you have going to Hornets? And we could say sources say, you know, people are saying that it's Brandon Miller due to fit. What are you thinking? I personally, LaMelo's played next to Terry Rozier, a small, also somewhat ball dominant guard for multiple years now, knows how to play off ball. Scoot Henderson, has a higher ceiling. Bigger than Terry Rozier. Better than Terry Rozier. It just makes sense. It's I just scoot. think, it's what are you thinking? You're, we've agreed on this for a while, but I want to hear yours. Who are you taking? I am also taking Scoot Henderson. Lamelo is a great off-ball shooter. I buy the athleticism and skills of Scoot to translate slightly more than Brandon Miller, I think. So I'm taking Scoot. I personally see the way I see it is Brandon Miller maybe has a higher floor. Like I think Brandon Miller is a floor raiser. Scoot Henderson's a ceiling raiser is the easiest way to say it. You have people comparing Scoot Henderson to MVPs, Russell Westbrook. <clears throat> you got yourself yeah. Derek Rose. They're also saying John Morant, say whatever you want about him. So an all NBA player. Okay. Then you got Brandon Miller compared to Paul George. No disrespect, Paul George loved PG Paul, thirteen. He came in third. And it's MVP. more like the Rashard Lewis comparisons that are like the difference between like Scoot and like Brandon Miller. Like Paul George is an elite player, so like it's a little different. Like like Brandon Miller's being compared to Rashard Lewis too. That's a little different. They compared fucking Jabari Smith to Rashard Lewis last year. I, I know, and that's different than Scoot being compared to MVP. Okay, so we're over here. Like, in don't put disrespect Paul George like that. Come on now. And then Brandon Miller. So we're going Brandon Miller, Henry? We're going Brandon Miller to, at three here to the Blazers if Let's they don't see. trade it. Or Henry's going on then? Yes. No, we're going Miller at three regardless of who has the pick, in my opinion, I think. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's a great point. Are we trading this pick? But the thing, like, trading is when we get really complicated into figuring out trades. And oh, yeah, but no, out. I'm right now, I think the best deal out there is Pascal Siakam. I guess to, to certain destinations, Amen Thompson is credible at three who are you I, trading? I could i could see that what is the what most reasonable t- trade in your mind realistically could you see this third pick being i see the toronto raptors anthony simons and the third pick maybe you said yosef nurkic in a third trade send whatever assets there to raptors and the raptors send you pascal siakam and whatever <clears throat> what do you what do you, I don't know what they're realistic I guess but it's like if are we gonna do trades no no I'm just saying I, I I'm not, yeah hypothetically I'm asking yeah I'm not gonna speculate on terms but I could see Utah also being interested in moving up to this spot they do have the assets to do that I think they have the ammo they have the assets yes the Blazers could be looking to flip those and assets they, for And the players. Rockets would have interest and are familiar with a few of those players on the Jazz. The Rockets were not on the Rockets, were on the Blazers. Yeah, I oh, think I oh, think yeah, Houston. Yeah. Dude, I think oh, Houston would take. Yeah, yeah. The boy, like the the Jazz have the assets to make that move. Yeah, dude. Why did I say Rockets? Yeah, so the Jazz have the assets to make that move, and they have because like they've got the ninth and the sixteenth pick, I think. And the Blazers are the Blazers could be looking to flip those picks for winnable win now players. Then you would, but like it would set off a chain of events because every Walker Kessler and Lowry would be untouchable. So you'd think it'd be like Taylor Horn Tucker, maybe I don't think so. 
uh, Colin Sexton, Jordan Clark. Well, it doesn't even Green matter. Jones. They have years and years worth of they extra also have a bunch, The Jazz also have a bunch of picks, and they have a shit ton of assets, including this year's draft and in the future, so it doesn't matter if it's just one pick. The Blazers trading for a bunch of picks would either mean we're going to trade Dame and rebuild, or we're going to get all those get picks. all those picks and flip them for like a star and build a big three around Dame or something. I also um, think the, oh, the, oh, the the 2000s Boston Celtics route, if you will. I think that speculating on trade terms pick. is going to be difficult because I also yes. think the current I think the currency landscape in the league is changing with the new CBA. I think picks are going to be coveted differently than they have been yeah really throughout the past decade and especially recently drafting is more important i'm surprised because of what they've done they didn't restructure the the rookie contracts because the rookie contracts escalate with the with the the media deals and i'm wondering because the whole thing with the tax aprons and that's why we're having all these coaching moves because of parity and so it'll be interesting to see because teams are going to try to build deeper or develop more in, you know like going because it's more important to build to the draft now because they're the tire spending teams if they spend too much they're getting they're going to get punished and that's just it's just so who are we going for what do you think henry you go you start off assuming that miller is the pick at three yes i think houston would be happy to take a man thompson at four which is different that's what... Mm-hmm. So the last time I saw you guys, I was lower on Amen Thompson, but I've come around to the idea. You, of yeah, I I have not came around, and I keep thinking if we they have, keep the pick. I mean, and Nate Doka wants the most NBA ready guy available. I know, right now that's we, either in the video, Jarris, Jarris yeah. Walker or Cam Whitmore. But we had a man going forth in and, that video yesterday, at least for us. Like that's. I know, I know, we did have. That's that. me. I still think it's going to be. I man. think it'll still be on man, but there's a part of me in my mind thinking I don't think Cam Whitmore's the most NBA ready. I think his body's the most NBA ready. The problem is pick. though that, that they need. Like, then you go out and get Walker. Of, regardless of whether they need an NBA ready pick or not, like Amen Thompson is has the highest potential, and they needed a contingency plan if James Harden spurns them and doesn't sign with them. You're going. Why are you taking on man? I think that he has the size to coexist alongside James Harden if he comes. I also think he can obviously play next to the current core that is in Houston. In terms of NBA readiness, I think a man will step in and be a plus defender pretty pretty shortly in his career, which is valuable. We don't really talk about that. I think his defense is great. I'm all in on his defense. I'm but just his scared. offense, he shows that the offense is there and that the playmaking is somewhat there. I'm not saying he's going to stick at point guard, but he's at least shown like the ability. Like, and it's also like, yeah, he also like has like an NBA ready. Okay, so my problem with, like is like maybe Henry, you can convince me. Who? What's the most comparable thing that? player he is like what is his potential like play style like because i see him as this guy who's more of a defensive guy pass first who like inside score Hmm. yeah i've been struggling to come up with a comp for him yeah because sometimes i see him more as a wing when he's especially when he's running out in the transition that's the one thing with me is like i like him I so love looks defense. Like a point forward, though. Yeah, that's another. That's a better way to say it. he looks more like a point forward than like a point a, wing. A point wing, yeah. And it's not like you know, like he looks really good when he has the ball in the open court and he's yeah. able to find the open man. And then, and he's so good inside, but I just, I, I agree here at four. I just, I don't know what to expect. And I what, still think he's the and, and his brother's the same way. His brother has more question marks, I think, but. Like the point is, like you never know with these OTE guys. We're not gonna know. Yeah. Well, who are you going five, Henry? I I've been saying Walker or Whitmore. All the Pistons fans say it's they need wing depth, so they're gonna go. Well, Whitmore. I don't want I don't want to quite move on from Ben Thompson yet because I think that it's hard to come up with a comparison for somebody who is being heralded as a top one percent athlete as soon as he enters the league, whether he is that or not. I, I think saw- that deserves like real consideration he could ah. somebody's compared him once i saw article like in november to a shorter but more explosive and athletic ben simmons mm. but he has better but like he's not as bad of a shooter though that's why uh, yeah but like 
well, there was hope when Ben Simmons was playing in summer league. I was about to say that he could shoot decently well, also. But like, I ben, like so he's he's shown I love more. That. He's I love shown that more shooting. Bad. He's shown more shooting than Ben up to this point. I also think that his handle is more developable, more developable with a higher upside than. Simmons. I I also think yes, a man that's also true. is a more is better at finishing at the rim. Like he finishes with more aggression. He can, he, because he's more of an explosive athlete, once he hits the free throw line, he's basically yamming it, you know? Yeah. No, he so, is, he is jaw-like in that regard sometimes. Yeah. So like, I, I think, I like, I think he is the highest potential guy there at four. I do agree with that. I just still think. I just think regardless of whether Harden goes there or not. He becomes the high risk, high reward. Yeah. And the Rockets are in a position where like they kind of need to do that. Yeah. But like, like how high is the risk if you have a plus defender and, and handle yeah. is the easiest I don't, thing. The risk, the risk is the three point shot never I think around. there's like, I think he's, I like him more than Cam Whitmore. And like, but at the end of the what day, is he if the three point shot never comes around with the doomsday scenario? Do this scenario, he's still a plus defender who can like handle the ball start and facilitate. He's potentially, he's potentially, million? he's potentially like, and, and if the three point shot ever comes around, he's like Marcus Smart but taller. No, I'm all for it. Yeah, I'm just maybe I'm playing devil's advocate here and I'm just bringing up the questions that are, yeah. Well, I think the answer is he's Ben Simmons like. I thought you were, I thought that was a good thing to add from you. No, 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 I, I agree. I love that comparison. That's what I see with it personally more of a wing version than a forward point yeah. wing yeah. and yeah i think that comparison i don't know who wrote it credit to whoever wrote it i just i remember seeing that a shorter more explosive athletic version of ben simmons and i was like damn that's a really yeah. good way because i see him as a defensive pass first guy who is well, a and great inside and the rockets have jalen green and james harden who are going to have the ball what are you saying makes sense wait you can repeat that again uh Logo. Oh, I'm saying it's like if he's a defensive pass first guy, like we're saying, it just makes sense because they have Jalen. Yeah, he doesn't need the ball. And like, it just it yeah. Fits. And those those are also people that can swing to him. He can like capitalize on yes. create cut to the basket, play back drive, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And even yeah. And then they can imagine the pick and roll between the three of them. Yeah, because he's a big enough body that maybe once he gets enough weight that he can even be the the role man. Exactly. Or It'll be very like, interesting. I'm very. Or he runs see the pick and roll. There, how he works out? Because I would, I would like to see him succeed. I think it'd be no, no. I'm all for it. I just, yeah, we're just like, it just makes sense. We've never seen a guy like that. The style with the athleticism and stuff. Yep. With but not the vision, the, the vision, the vision, and the shooting of a man Thompson are real concerns. So yeah. Yeah. And I think the only reason there's this many questions is because he played in OT. Then that's all and the biggest one right there. There and then the the shooting from three yeah the ote one is the big but the big thing you want to encounter is ote plays with an nba three-point line i know which is fine but it's like if he's not a good shooter in the nba three-point line it's like i mean that could improve but it's like it's just the at thing least is, he started the training yeah, it's just the thing is it's ote and ote is just we don't know how these he's guys pushed are by kevin do. ollie yeah we don't know how these guys are gonna do so i'm gonna segue to pick five only because i have osar thompson at five and I will defend OTE because I liked watching Jay-Zion Gortman play at the Combine. Dominic Barlow looked decent at Summer League. I put you on to Jay-Zion Gortman. I kept telling you about <laughs> Jay-Zion. I told you. I kept saying he reminded me of like a Dennis yeah. Schroeder. In a weird way, yeah. I kept seeing Dennis Schroeder yeah. when he played. I was like, this guy yeah. just looks like... It was all right. Put in a good shift. You know? I would give him a second round pick if I had an extra He didn't really league. score, but he showed he was a good... He had some good rebounds. You know, he did all the team things. Second round pick, yeah. throw more your G. But anyway, side. this pick, I'm torn between Jairus and Asar. Asar is like good for their wing depth, which they need. Okay, so Monty Williams likes the defense. I think it's either Walker or Thompson. I mean, the, Cam Whitmore's the dark horse if Troy Weaver really wants to get freaky here and get like go young. But they signed Monty long term. I, and I mean, they're all young, bro. They have Boyan, and we still don't know. And they have Alberks. They're a team that wants to contend. Hey, kind of hands going to year three, which is crazy to think about. Jay Nivey's going into year two. Or oh, is this year three? No, so, my three. question is you take Thompson, 
yeah, he's the wing version, but he doesn't shoot three. I just think the Walker, I... If we we had Walker, Walker. I'm going Walker. We had Walker at five. You don't have a pure power. We had Walker at five just because they have Bowie on. We were talking about this yesterday. And it's like, they've got guys in those spots already. They have Beef Stew, but he's more, like, I love Beef Stew. But then they have Durant, Durant and and Wiseman and Bagley. Like... But regardless of what the Pistons want to do in terms of like their competitive ambitions, they're going to not be good at basketball this year, I don't think. So I'm taking the best player available, which I That's think is... That's Cam Whitmore. Wait, not best player available. Best, player available best potential. Best player available is Jairus. Best player potential-wise, you think it's still Cam over Asar? Yes, I think Cam has a higher potential than Asar. I don't know. Really? But if you're... Gonna, if, but they need to keep exploring this this Cade and Jay okay. Ivy do obviously, and if that is the future, then they're gonna need defense as well. If we're yeah. going for another rebuilding year under the first year of Monty Williams, and we're not trying to make the play in, I'm going Cam Whitmore. He's 235 pounds. He's a freak athlete. He's six seven. Then you wing depth. He turns 19 in July. The kid's 18. Okay, he's gonna be 18 on draft night. I'm taking that I know. potential. And I get it, but like all these guys are young, bro. They're all like within like, like I always hate. I always I never like that argument because it's like. Yeah, he just happens to be young for his class, but they're all still young. It's like, I know, one year college or overtime elite, like Asar did. Like, they're the same age. Like, they're all young. They all have 235 pounds with a 40 plus. He has an NBA, he has a a very NBA ready body right now. And he's coming out of Villanova, so you know the fundamentals are easy. I know, but like, people forget, people forget that Villanova was not very good this year. They were not a good team. And Kim Whitmore, I'm not saying that he wasn't a good player. Like he played pretty well at times, but he was like what a thirty three percent three point shooter or something or thirty four, which is fine. But like with one of not... the lowest. I'm oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Keep going. No, keep no. You go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Those shooting numbers are true with one of the lowest assist rates, like yes. of, of any prospect in this draft. Yes, and, and this is a Villanova team that I know they play slow, but the thing is the assist Marty rate, Williams. the fact that it's assist rate. What I'm like, he's right. It's alarming because. This is an offense that moves the ball around. And so the ball, with and Monty Williams, assists. Monty Williams runs like, it. I either it's called the one and a half or half second offense. You have three options. This is the scheme that Monty Williams runs, and he's ran it since the days with the Hornets. And it's you have three set uh, three options. You either make it in a half second or one and a half. Dribble, shoot, pass. And when you dribble, you dribble either to score or you dribble to kick out, and AK dribble to you know find the open man. And you have literally basically a second to make that decision. And if you don't play by the style, he won't play you. So if you, you look back Devin at Booker and he lets Devin Booker run. Yeah. So. Yeah. Or like, you know, okay. Kevin but Durant like, yeah. and like, you know, those, those are superstars. But, but the like, whole yeah, thing is about ball movement and spacing the floor and keep it, just basically keeping the ball moving. And yeah, I know Cam isn't, you know, a guy who had a great assist ratio, but Mikhail Bridges came out of Villanova. Mikhail I, Bridges had better numbers though at Nova. I know, I Mikhail know. Bridges was a better defender at Nova. Mikhail Bridges was a more efficient shooter at I Nova. I know, but you're These telling me Monty, you Monty Williams didn't go to the Pistons without getting the kind of a Quinn Snyder deal where he has final say. I'm not saying that. Awesome what decisions. makes you think that Cam Whitmore would be the guy here? Because he's familiar, he probably would have Mikhail Bridges feel it out for him because he probably has a good re- relationship with Mikhail. And I feel like right there, he probably would, uh, if he had to choose between where they tell him we're not going to take Walker, you have to decide between Thompson and Whitmore. He would probably take Whitmore. If they because, said they're not going to take Walker, but like, I don't know, man. Because I think I always like, mm, like, I just think he's the higher potential. Like, I, I see SR, yeah, all NBA. I mean, all, well, I don't the, know what all Whitmore, defense. I don't know what Whitmore can do, man. I think all. What's the, Whitmore going to do on offense? Whitmore, he's going to be cutting to the basket. He's going to be okay. He's going to be a slasher. Like I think he's not really going to be doing much on his own. Yeah, but you have him kind of give him the treatment of like I know, but Asar has higher potential. He's to playing be that, like how so the like, Portland Trailblazers played Shane Sharp like 20, 18 minutes a night to start the year, and then slowly, as you trust him more. I know, but like Asar, like. Asar, Asar's like showing more flashes of being able to create. I know it's OTE and the confidence is probably not as good. So. I don't know. It's different. But Cam Whitmore's the better shot creator than Asar Thompson. They're both not good. I mean, Cam Whitmore's a good shot creator in theory. <laughs> in theory. In theory. He's not efficient at it. He 
has the moves to do it. Okay, what I'm saying is, I like how you had to add in theory. Part. In theory, yeah, in theory, I had to add in theory because the oh. numbers would say, is he a good shot creator? No, but is he putting the moves together? You know, the step backs, the dribbles, creating space and creating the separations. He's not, the shots, he's not because half the time they're fucking contested as all hell. But that's why you get someone to teach him how to take the good shots. I don't know, man. Uh, you're what higher if, on Cam Whitmore than me. I still haven't been high on Cam Whitmore like for a while, and I'm not. I don't know if I. I'm still am not. But I would it, love what the Cam would Whitmore. Do. I would love for Cam Whitmore to fall to seven because I think that he would really thrive playing next to a Tyrese Halliburton, as most players would. But I think yeah. that's the type of role where his development could actually occur. I fucking agree. Uh, during the pre-lottery mock drafts when the Pistons, uh, not Pistons, the Pacers were at five, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong? Yeah. I routinely had him go into the Pacers because I thought that was the best fit. Now that you said that, I, I, are we just going to have, because you guys are just, I majority think, rule, you guys are doing a Sar Thompson? I think we go a Sar here, I guess. I, I mean, because like, it's if it's not Jairus, but like, I don't know if the Pistons want to pick a big guy. We're right doing a Sar? Spot. Yeah. Henry? Henry? Yep. And then, I mean, this is where I would have had Cam Whitmore at six. We had him here last time. But, um, unless the Magic surprise everyone, unless the Magic go Jairus here. I mean, if we take Jairus, that means we we view Paulo as our future center. Yeah, which I don't know if they do. Oh, I don't know how I feel about I think that. that's a crazy thing. I was about to say, what do you mean? If you take Jairus Walker... Even even uh, small ball lineups with Paulo at the five. I don't know. That would be very very situation. I was about to agree with you. I'm saying that yeah, I would. Like I, he said, he said yeah, I was about to say uh, Paul, the thought of Paul Van Carroll being my center defensively, at least. I, offensively, I'm fine with it. Defensively, that's why I'm saying defensively. That's why we had Cam Whitmore going here last time because it just makes sense. I mean, I could see so us going Taylor either. Hendricks if they. Could you see Taylor Hendricks? No. Yes. <laughs> I think that Hendricks and Wendell Carter Jr. make a good platoon of like offense and rim protection. You could alternate them and have a more lineup flexibility there. Yeah, and it allow Yeah, I think I agree with you. And it also allows them to move on from Jonathan Isaac. They kind of get... I'll preface this now. I you guys are gonna Maybe you have to convince me on Jairus a lot. I have him as like a fringe lottery player, I think. Wow. 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 So oh, as man. we go through this, <laughs> reaching a consensus might be difficult. Like, okay, so like we're he's a about, better beef stew. Like, so like, like we're he's talking like, about what the magic would do. I, I don't know, man. The I'm going Taylor Hendricks right It would here. be Taylor Hendricks or Cam Whitmore. But if you guys are both- Or Grady Dick, Hendricks, bro. Or it's Grady, no, Dick. Grady Dick. Like, Grady Dick at six. If they like him, in they like one of him. my recent mocks, I had Dick at six, but I don't like it at all. I'm yeah. going Hendrix here, guys. I think it just makes sense. I they have two Cam firsts. Whitmore. I think it's they're not going to make. I don't. I think it's Cam Whitmore because he's not going to be available at eleven. They don't want Cam Whitmore. They need three point shooting. They probably are just looking at Dick, Jordan Hawkins, and like Jordan Bilal Hawkins Kulani. wouldn't be available right now. No, they at eleven, him. Jack. They wouldn't take him. It's okay. If, okay, would you think they go Dick at six? I say Hendrix. Really I'm going Hendrix. What are you saying, Henry? I think that OKC would be interested in moving up to six. I've heard. I saw the reports yeah. today. OKC yeah. would move up to six, and who would OKC take at six? I Hendrix. think they would be most interested in that if Asar is I... gone. Oh, really? Yeah. Really. I'm saying but... right now, if we stay at home, it's Hendrix. I'll 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 I'll, uh, I'll take your word for it because you're a Magic fan. So I'll take your yeah. Word I'm for fine with doing Hendrix here. More. I'll take your word for it. I I'll give you I'll give the shout out to the Magic on this one. But okay, now we go to the Pacers. I've seen people actually like a lot of people projecting Anthony Black to the Indiana Pacers, which surprised me is because they have Andrew Nemhard, they have Tyrese Halliburton. Not only that, they have. Chris Duarte, Benedict. Yeah, Matt, I didn't right? see anybody. I didn't see any other teams reporters talking to Anthony Black besides the Wizards all day. What, what do you take of that? So, and the fact that Anthony Black has been projected like from like some prominent mock drafts. Like I just 
Like, obviously, I see it because of the potential, and they probably think, like, oh. I'm Tyrese Halliburton, though. You know, yeah, but I don't see the fit because, like, how you know, they don't need him. They, they don't need him. What do you think? Ben Mathurin and Tyrese is already there. Battery. I think that Orlando could consider him at six, potentially, as well. What do you think about that? I do see it. I do oh, see Anthony it. Oh, Anthony Black at six? I do see yeah. it. I do see it. I do. We're past that, but like, yeah, like, oh, that's an outside. That's a dark horse pick at six. For me, but it would just add to the log jam. It would add to the log jam, and it would. I would then probably we'd probably at the same time. You'd have to trade one of them. Yeah, I was gonna say we'd probably end up trading the eleven pick to another team for probably somebody, or to like we'd probably do some sort of trade where we. would we might not trade the 11. I was pick, talking about like, one of Suggs or Fultz. I think we'd keep Suggs and Fultz. I think we'd trade Cole Anthony. Okay. I like one Fultz a lot, which is why I, I love Fultz. One of those guys Fultz. is on the block. One of those guys is on the block. It's it's Cole Anthony. It's the one who can't so, play yeah. defense. So Cole Anthony would be traded then. And then they what do you think, the Mr. Uh, Lakeland Magic? I think Cole Anthony is glue to that team. I would put Suggs on the block. You think so? Ball. Yeah. yeah, I think they still view Suggs as maybe being able to figure out, uh, you know, on offense because Suggs is still a good defender and a good passer right now. We can't yeah. say him, like uh, at this yeah. point we think he could be Drew Holiday. Figures it out. <laughs> I couldn't say that seriously. Yeah, <laughs> it's like he figures it out on offense. Anyway, so if we're thinking, that's what do you serious. think, Henry? You were about to say something. Yeah, go ahead. Well, should we just move on from six since we already put Hendricks there? Yeah, 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 but uh, um, what are what are we thinking here? Because for seven? I, yeah, I think it's, it's Jairus Walker. It, Cam, yeah. No, it's Cam Whitmore. Why are we dissipating? We just yeah. said it. We Cam, had, I, I had Cam Whitmore yeah. at six and you went against me. So, like, now nope. it's got to yeah. be Yeah, this is Cam Whitmore at seven for me, for sure. Yeah, it's got to be at this point, right? All right, and now Anthony we're Black, eight, right? And now it's Anthony Black to the Wizards. It just makes too much sense. Are you against this, Henry? Henry's the dark horse. He's going to fucking nope. say it's like, you want Anthony? <laughs> I, am very much, I am very much in favor. Yeah, which means that now we're at nine. This is where I think this is where Jarris Walker could go because Lowry Market is a wing. I know, and then it would be very interesting to have Walker Kessler, Jarris Walker. How fucking would that be weird? Yeah. Walker and Walker. Yeah, Walker. The Walker, Walker to Walker. The Walker and Walker, and then you have Lowry on the wing. That's actually not a bad lineup. What do you think of that? Or are you going Grady Dick? I am going one of Kobe Buffkin or Keontae George. You have them that early. Yeah, Kobe, I, I, I have. We had Kobe like, like end of fringe line. I had Kobe going to the Hawks. We had Kobe or Thunder line. one time. I like, I like. Ooh, the Thunder would be interesting. I like the thought of that. I'm, I'm, pretty high on, I'm pretty high on a lot of these guards coming up. So we got Jer. Like, I'm, I'm the other way. Jer. I'm a little I'm still, lower. I'm still thinking Jerris here. I don't know how to, the guards are just all kind of a mishmash. I'm going Jerris. I'm going Jerris here just because it just the next to walk like they don't i don't okay so let me tell next, you why next like to walker Jerry. you're gonna put jairus next to walker and laurie yeah you don't like the thought of that that's beautiful that's an insane i, I, that's I, fucking like ins I love that. okay let me tell you why let me tell you he just hates jairus all right what's up uh, jairus's three-point shot this year 32 it was in the 30s it was, in the 30s. It was, it was, it was okay. like around cam Whitmore. so imagine it was cam it was cam levels but he had a higher sample right. size and jairus walker is like maybe we're sleeping on him maybe it was the What's his weight? 250? 240, yeah. 240? Okay. But Maybe he, we, he moves. Him? He moves. Yeah, so, no, it's Cam Whitmore levels. It's like 35. 35? He's a little higher than Cam Whitmore. I think actually. he's like a combination of like... On three threes a game. He's like this power forward who can be a small ball five, but even in a huge lineup, he could play small forward if you wanted to go freakishly large. And he has the ability to play inside and out. He has a little bit of ball handling to him too. Yeah, no, I'm, like I'm, he can put the when ball I on the floor. Step back threes, and Kelvin Sampson had no choice but to be happy with him taking them because he it was it went in. It's, it's like, like I know you hate the like honestly. If Naz Reed and Beef Stew had a brainchild that was more athletic, yeah, he would be that. Like, and he has the ability to play the inside and outside defensively. Like he can guard. The the, the thought is he can guard one through five. And at least they would have versatility. Yeah, and offensively right now, he would be dominant inside, slashing, setting, you know, be a pick and roll rim runner, being a lob threat, being a guy who's going to cut back door from baseline on. He's a good muscle rebound. Yeah, too. and you'd hope right how now. Many, how many dunks do you think Jarris Walker has this season? 
How many dunks? I don't know. Houston's offense. Did you just search it up? Houston's offense is not. Really, I'm gonna look it up. If you guys want to guess? Houston's offense is a super old school, like slow paced, uh, like plotting style of offense. They were in like the, the low 300s in Division One in tempo. So he's not gonna have that many dunks. Their offense was so slow paced. They're just not getting that many opportunities. They're not a transition team. They're very slow moving. They take 20 okay. seconds every time they go. Let me ask a different question then. What do you think that Jarris Walker shot on layup attempts this season? Percentage wise. 54. 50s? 54%. Well, I hit that on the nose. That. That's an amazing guess. That's a really concerning number to me. Oh, yeah. That's concerning as hell. Yeah. But he, that's 35. He was 35 of 65 on layups. So I also think like he was like their number one option and he wasn't their number one option. He was their like no, that's option. Not true. He was their number three. Whoa. Marcus Sasser oh, and yeah. uh, Jamal Shedd were their first two options. Jamal Shedd was? Yeah, because Jamal Shedd averaged like eleven or twelve a game. Because he it's the guards. Well, the okay, guards, let me rephrase the guards initiate the offense. No, let me rephrase that then. He was like their kind of like their big though. Like he the, was their best he was their, their best, best scorer big. big, big yeah. The other big that played next to him was not an offensive player at all. And let me rephrase that to like because like blatantly I was wrong right there. But what I want to say is he was their main inside scoring threat. So all these teams were just drop covering he was him. He the best screener. And everybody just knew what, their best, everyone knew what he was doing. He was do. their best screener. He had to set a lot of screens and he was very good at it. And he showed a great propensity. But everyone knew he, he showed was a great predictable. Propensity the offense made him predictable. He showed a great he was very good at operating in the pick and roll. Yeah, but I'm saying the, the reason why he was inefficient, why I'm, I'm defending him is Yeah, because it's the offense. He was number off- three. And but like but everyone knew when he got into his sets. Yeah, what they were gonna do. Yeah, it's a slow plotting offense. Yeah, that's how they work. So he was predictable. So he was just taking efficient. I'm just believing that, like with Will, they never got to take advantage of Jared. I've been saying that all year. They never got to take advantage of Jared. Yeah, and Will Hardy would have like Lowry Market and Walker Kessler set like off ball screens for uh, for Jarris Walker to cut to the basket, and then you have someone like. You know, I guess they would have Taylor Horn Tucker, you know. His strengths better suit. Guard. Let me just say this this way. I think his strengths better suit the Jazz than they did. The and with a coach like Will Hardy. His I... strengths better suit the Jazz than they do in college. Oh, That's my God. Like you know that. who he is? He's fucking Boris Dio. Dude, no, Will... he's fucking Pat. He's, he's literally Pat Williams. He's a more athletic Boris Dio. He's a more athletic. Boris Dio is a freak athlete. That's not just But he just didn't try. That is very fucking true. He didn't try. That's what it is. Like... Boris Diaw, Boris Diaw was legitimately a freak athlete, but he just like didn't try. Yeah, I honestly, that's my comparison. If we're gonna compare Jarris Walker, he's Boris Diaw and Will Hardy's from the Greg Popovich branch. I think Jarris Walker is like a good fit for the Jazz. I think his strengths fit them. I'm a, I'm 100 percent digging this Boris Diaw comparison. Yeah, I'm thinking Jarris here. I'm thinking Jarris here. What do you think? I, it's got to be Jarris. It's got to be. Who are you taking if it's not? At this point, you it's said it's Keontae Jarris. George or. Or Buffkin, but I think they're gonna get Nick Smith later in the draft anyway. So yeah, I was gonna. Uh, I have taking. One of I have guys. Nick Smith sliding, or uh, they're gonna get one. And of those they guys. take Nick later. They're gonna get one because I think guys. guards are sliding in this draft. Yeah, and they're gonna get one of those guys because there's more of them. There's so many of them, and I also think they're gonna get one of them available in the draft. And, they, and, they like and I also think guard wise, they're like Taylor Horton Tucker's now a point guard. He played the last. Since the All Star break, he was their starting point guard, and yeah, it's have what seventeen, guards. six, and One six or whatever. Be available in their next pick. Dexton's but... still on the roster. Clarkson might come back. Jarris won't. Be Dunn's on a like supposedly going to come back. Jarris won't. Be what are you saying? This should, be, pick. this should be a a year where Sexton leads the backcourt in possessions. I think pretty convincingly. I think he will slash should if he's healthy. Or become then, like six man of the year and replace Jordan Clarkson. It's like role of six man of the year. I think I foresee THT as more of a six man type like bench rotation. Sexton, really? Sexton I starts. fucked with no, THT sent ending Sexton. the year going seven. What is he? 17, six and six to close out the year? Maybe, but he probably what shot like 40% from the field. No, he's fucking insane. I'm pulling this up. Okay, so what are we going here? We spent a lot of time on the Jazz. The Jazz have another pick. I'm going Jarris Walker because the going bigs are going to be gone by the yeah, end. Yeah, Jarris isn't going to be available by their next pick, but they're going to have a bunch of guards that are going to be available to be able to help them out at the next pick. They're not going to have Jarris. So they, like, if they're going to get Jarris. All right, all right. that's being, that's a fine argument. Yeah, it just makes sense. 
Man. And then they've yeah. got now we have number 10. And Bilal Koulibaly. Ciro has Bilal Koulibaly because he says the Mavs are not going to pick Grady Dick. Mark Stein and Tim Cato have said it. I agree that they won't take Dick. I don't like Koulibaly this high. Taylor Horn Tucker averaged 18 points, six assists, five rebounds, a steal a night, half a block shot, 32% from three on four and a half attempts, and 43.3% from the field on 15 and a half attempts, and got to the free throw line almost five times a game. This is the him. final one game of the season? How many? What's no, the <laughs> 19 games playing 30 minutes a night. That's not that sample size. No, that's. I, I was impressed by him at times. I remember him scoring like 40. Okay, who do you have going here? Then if it's not Bilal Koulibaly, it's either Kassan yeah. Wallace, Jordan Hawkins, or Jalen Hood Shafino. I think the Mavs should trade down. We'll oh, I agree. I don't think they're gonna keep the pick, but like if they keep the pick, we're just not doing trades. Because then we gotta think about the hypotheticals and we don't know what teams are actually gonna do as far as personnel roster. Um yeah, and I guess Koulibaly positionally makes the most sense here. And I, I I do like his game a little. I think he's the, the Jalen Williams of this class in terms of the highest riser. That Jalen Williams yeah. was a late first round pick when all the mocks started. Then post combine, he became a lottery pick. That's how cool Bali was. Free, he was, you know what I mean? It's, sure. Yeah. But Jadov has way more, Jadov has way more craft. Not that oh, you're yeah. comparing necessarily, but Jadov has way more craft. You were more confident in his competition playing at Santa Clara. Uh, Oh I yeah, am. but all the exposure to Bilal is what's going on. They went on the championship yes. run. Yes, yes, that is true. But anyway, we'll go Bilal here. I just yep. think he's the guy who's just flown up the board that there people yeah. have like fallen in love with, and like playing next to uh, like Victor Wembanyama, like being the second leading scorer and shit. And then we the other day had Grady Dick going here. It just makes sense because they. We especially with us taking it to Taylor Hendricks now. They like rebounding and they like three point shooting. What's Grady Dick? Rebounding and three point shooting. Yep. I vote trade, but I'm fine with Kula Bali here. Oh, yeah. I, uh, great, yeah. Yeah. For the Mavs, it's trade, but they probably. I think right here, Kassan Wallace. Can. They need a backup yeah. point guard or Kobe Bufkin. I'm kind of agreeing with you because I see this. They need a guy that, oh, Shea's tired, but we still want Josh Giddy there. You put Kobe Bufkin or Kason. And then vice versa, Kaysan, Josh Giddy yeah. needs a break. You put in Kason or Whoa. are we at Kobe? twelve right now? We skipped yeah, yeah. We took Grady we, Dick we, at we eleven. Dick at eleven. We did Kyle Wally at ten, and then Magic Grady Dick. My fault. Like, I missed that. Dude, um, did you did you agree dude, with why, that? Though? Why are you guys? This log jam. This log jam is not a log jam. Me. Grady I Dick's a shooting like... guard. Grady Dick's a wing, bro. Yeah, Grady Dick's a shooting he's guard. Six eight, six nine. Yeah, but he's a shooting guard. He's like two hundred and ten pounds. Uh, but like that's what you did you think Grady Dick's like a a power forward? No, I view him as a wing. Like a combo forward slash. I forward. see him as a swing man, shooting guard small I forward. I just think I just think that the magic needs somebody who will put like 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 punishing pressure on the basket, and I don't think it's Dick. I think it's Keontae George. I I just think right I here, just don't think they take Keontae George when like we we just talked about earlier, they have Suggs, Fultz. Uh, and fucking uh, Cole Anthony, and like they that's not, not that many. Yeah, but it's they're not, not gonna. Even. They need to figure out that whole situation. And in reality, their point guards are Markel should be the starter. Either Suggs or Cole Anthony should be the backup, and then you don't have any more room for the the guards. You don't have a, your starting what? shooting guard is like I. I just think you have two point guards. Markel Fultz is a thirty minutes a night guy at least. Okay, that means yeah. there's eighteen minutes left to play backup point guard. You either keep Suggs or Cole Anthony, or you keep both of them, and you figure out that rotation right there. You already have three. Why would you draft another point guard that needs minutes? I say you go and get yourself a shooting guard. Grady Dick right there is a shooting guard who is a rebounding shooting guard. Okay, George was an inefficient scorer as well. And I, it's and, not his fault. And the magic, to some extent, it's not his fault because of like they they asked a lot of him. And the Magic front office is the same front as the front office from the Milwaukee Bucks when they drafted Giannis Antetokounmpo, ran you know ran by Weltman. And he uh, is obsessed with size. We've seen it with Wendell Carter, Paul Bancaro, Bull Bull, Jonathan Isaac, um, Franz Wagner. And then think about this. Now you get yourself a 6'8", 6'9", shooting guard next to your, who's like athletic. 
who can play next to Franz Wagner. So now you're telling me you potentially could have a starting lineup of Wendell Carter Jr., Paulo Roncaro, Franz Wagner, Brady Dick, and Markel Folds. That's six five. What Brady? I mean, not Brady. Um, uh, Folds is Folds. the shortest guy in that lineup, and he's six, six, four, four, six, six five. five. And nice. then you got a six eight, six nine, forty percent three point shooter guy in Brady Dick, who four is Kevin Herter with better rebounding ability and yeah. defense more tries better on defense. It's just it makes it like just it, fit, it fits. There's not much else to say. Have I convinced you on Grady Dick? No. I am seeking a traditional combo guard at the two for Orlando. I, I don't think, think he... Dick is yeah. not agile enough sometimes to play the two for me. Yeah, but I, I think going they're going I think they're like doubling down on the super like size length thing. They've like shown it for years. This just fits yeah, what they want to do with that. I get that the the pitfall of that plan in Toronto was the lack of shooting, and Dick is an amazing shooter. Yeah, so I like want. A- Keontae was injured at Baylor, and he, but he is like a two way bulldog, like like crafty around the rim. I just like what he brings to the table more than I would what Dick brings. And I also yeah, it was just there, what, like watching him last year and watching him in college. There was too many times last year. We also have he loves like, and it's like part of it is like. <laughs> he didn't need to like take that. Like he did. Sometimes he was like, he's the only guy doing anything on offense. But he's gonna have Franz Wagner. Paul but there was there, there was other times where he tries to like he's a bulldog, but he tries to take it. He tries to force it too much. Yeah, that's why he had times with this where he looked really inefficient. Whereas Grady didn't really have that, but Grady also wasn't as aggressive in terms of like. So who are we taking at twelve? I could see Kobe Bufkin or Kasan Wallace. I think it's Kasan Wallace or Keontae George. I'm sorry to think it's Kobe Bufkin. I think it's Kasan Wallace or Keontae George in this spot. Who are you going, Henry? Uh, definitely not, uh, Kasan. Um, I love Kasan. He's a dog. <laughs> Kasan is a love, dog. I love Kasan. Kasan is a dog. I think it's, uh, it's him or Keontae George let's here. Go Bufkin. Let's go Buffkin. I love that. Not bit. Keontae George. Interesting. I guess. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm really I'm, back, I'm really back and forth on those two in general. I don't know who I would like even really. Okay, who are we going here? I've been feeling all those Jordan three. Hawkins right Kaysan, here. Keontae George and Kobe Buffkin. I don't know who I like better out of those three. I like Keontae George because he plays defense. So does Kason. Kason's a dog. But Ke- okay, well Kason is Keontae a dog. George that's like, that's and like Nick Kaysan Smith are combo straight. guards. Kason's a point guard. Yeah. Yeah. But so like, I, I just don't like comparing them because like you I know, know you're saying Kason's a dog defensive. I like Kason a lot. It's just how much you value the guards in this draft. This is Jordan Hawkins to the Raptors. I think it's Jordan Hawkins this... or it's Nick Smith. I have Kason to the Raptors here. They do need a point guard. Pretty badly. I agree with that. Yeah, we didn't have Kason falling last time we did this, so Kason went at twelve. So yeah, Kason to the Raptors. Then Jordan Hawkins here or Keontae George. We had Keontae we George, had, yeah. but Jordan Hawkins was not available. In my, in my laughing, in my published mock, I made this the the Bobby Clintman promise. Bobby Clintman. I used to be high on Bobby Clintman, but now I think him. he's a second round pick. I'm low on him. He didn't do shit in. College. Is it Bobby or Bobby? Bobby. Bobby didn't. He didn't do <laughs> shit at Wake Forest, bro. I'm gonna call him Bobby. A terrible team. You think he's a for a lottery pick? No, but I don't know what the fuck the Pelicans should do with this pick. What, I think I, it's Keontae George or Jordan. Or they Jordan loved Hawkins, Eric Gordon, yeah. and I think Keontae George is like kind of like Eric Gordon. Nice. No, Wait, sorry. Say that again. Who are our best players on the board? Keontae and who? We got Nick Smith, Keontae George, Jordan Hawkins, Derek Lively, Jalen Shafino. But Derek Lively. I go. Player. I go Hawkins or Keontae George. I go. Yeah, that's what I. That's what, I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I lean towards Keontae go, George. Or... I think Keontae here. Yeah, because I think that way their starting backcourt is Brandon Ingram and CJ McCollum. Their backup backcourt is Dyson Daniels slash Jose Alvarado and and Keontae George. All right, here we go. We're going to go with ourselves. Hawks, I have Jalen Hitchfina right here or Jordan Hawkins. What are you thinking? I like Hawkins. I have Dreek Whitehead here. Wow, you I think to, that's you I, to, I think that's too high. Recent foot surgery announcement makes me think two foot surgeries. Good. He's fallen even I'll more. I'll say Hawkins because he's available now. We didn't have him available last time. I think Hutchifino because I I don't I think they're trading this pick personally because they're not working out anybody in the lottery. Yeah, but like they're probably gonna trade the pick. But, but I if they don't, I, I think it's gonna be Jordan Hawkins. 
but they didn't play AJ Griffin. Ben Hawkins is more ready than AJ Griffin to continue. What do you think, Henry? I do think I agree that Hawkins is more ready than than Griff. What about Hochefino? They need a backup point guard. Yeah, he might be my best player available, so I'd be fine with that. Yeah. I'm taking J- yeah, H- Jay. That's the other guy they'd pick if they don't pick Jordan Hawkins here. Jazz here, I say they take Nick, Nick Smith. Smith. They took Jarris. Who's you who are you taking here? Who's I your decide, let's I let's decide, give Henry. This is Henry's pick. We forced yeah. him into Jarris. This is Henry's pick. We forced him into Jarris. Yeah, we did force him to Jairus. We did. We just fucking Eiffel okay, powered we just, him. We shoved we shoved Jairus down his throat. We sodomized him. We Jairus. shoved that Jairus down his throat. <laughs> we said, "He's a great screener, damn it!" <coughs> the offense restricted his skills. Yeah. <laughs> Shoving our Jairus propaganda down his throat. I want this to be my three whitehead spot. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I don't agree with it, but we got to give you. If there was a team that could take the chance, it would be the Jazz. So we had them going next. Yes. Smith, but the second foot good. surgery is a good sign for me. I think I'm it was going... more of a cleanup. Yep. I yeah, think the I second foot surgery was more of a cleanup. I believe it. I believe it. I'm I'm high on him. I'm just wondering if the injury is going to just have teams lower. Yeah, up. Nick Smith had the same problem that Derek White had. Well, I'm having the at this point because I had Jalen and Chafino falling here and going to the Lakers. I think it's Nick Smith. Yeah, probably. You agree, Henry? Yeah, yeah. I had Nick Smith going to the He's Jets. He's the highest potential. I had Nick Smith going to the Jets. Or it's Jet Howard. Jets. What do you I think, think they value Smith. right now more? Nick Smith or the three-point shooting that Jet Howard can life get after, Life after LeBron and AD in two years, Nick Smith. I mean... That's- Nick Smith is someone who I still need to do a deep dive on, to be honest with you. So I'm Nick down Smith, to Nick Smith is Nick Smith is like the textbook like NBA combo guard like frame. Probably. He's Jamal yes. Murray. People are comparing him to. Yes, the textbook no NBA way. combo he's so guard. Skinny. Yeah, like people. He's, uh, his, he's the in terms of skill set, he's the textbook NBA combo guard. Yeah, that so has he was a top five uh, pick. that has point guard like skills. He was the top. He was a predicted top five pick all year until the injuries, and then it, that's why he's fallen this far. But he's he like he like. He got hurt three times this year. Like, he had the Dariq Whitehead situation where he kept getting hurt. But uh, he has high. Who do you like more, Nick or Jet? Nick. I didn't think where do Nick. you guys have Podzimski? And the first. Late first, early second. Late okay. first. Yeah, okay. what? Yeah. Right here, I got Rain Rupert. Yeah, we, Rain Rupert's a heady pick. They, all, they also, he's the top guy they worked out. He's After you told me that out. Leonard Miller comes off as dumb. I think <laughs> R- Rain Rupert is my guy right here. Rain Rupert make Rain Rupert's the highest guy that worked out in the spot too. Yeah, like we're Golden State. Are we going or we're Miami? No, we're Miami. Miami. Rain Rupert was the highest rated guy that worked out at the spot. Yeah, I had Cool Bali falling here. I think it's. Rupert. I would have had Cool Bali if he's available here too. But it's Rupert. I so. think it's Rupert here because he then kind of can be like the perfect Jimmy Butler backup. And then maybe life Jimmy after Butler-like. Jimmy life after Jimmy Butler. Yeah, Jimmy Butler light. That's his upside. He's a point forward. Jimmy Butler light. Or Pascal Siakam. But a better three-point shooter than Jimmy Butler was at this stage. Not very would, would you consider Jet Howard here? Yes. Oh yes, yes. that's who Jet Howard. Yes, I would so consider Jet consider Howard him. or Noah Clowney. Yeah, Jet Howard going to the Lakers. Or Noah Clowney. Noah Clown, I'd say it's Ray and Rupert or Jet Howard. I, I agree. I'm I'm preferring Jet here, I think. I just I can give you Jet. I can give, I can you, give you Jet. I can give you Jet. Golden State. This is what I think Noah they take Clown. Noah Clownley. He's Clownley. the backup for Draymond Green and Kevon Looney. And he's kind of like he could become the next Kevon Looney. So he's a piece of shooting his potential is way yeah. better than Kevon Looney. Kevon never shot. What do you think about that? No, it's Noah Clowney or Ray and Rupert here. I'm fine. Or I, we have Jordan Hawkins falling far. Well, let's be honest. J- Jordan Hawkins, what does he bring you besides three point shooting? Where are we at right now? We're uh, the Rockets. They take Hawkins here. Probably, yeah. Uh, I used to have Greece. But I think if Hawkins falls here, they'd rather yeah. have Hawkins. Hawkins falls you agree here. with that, Henry? Jeez. It's a lot of guards, but yeah, I do. He's more of a wing. Hawkins? No, yeah, Hawkins too. I think Hawk, Hawkins is a swing man. He's a two guard. I think he's a swing man. He's not though. He's a two guard. I think he can play shooting like Will Barton. 
You can play shooting guard and small enough. forward. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I still but think Will, Will Barton's bigger. I, Will Barton's is bigger. I, yeah, same size, six five. I still think Will Barton's from Baltimore. I still think they take Will Barton six five. I still think they take Hawkins here because he's available. Yeah, best player available. I think you agree with yeah, that, Henry? He's still yeah, here. I do. He's still here, and like if Brees is there, okay. So now we're at the Nets. The Nets take pick. Ran right here. Yeah, and then they have back to back picks. And then what? Derek Lively with the second one, I think. Where no. I have Derek, I think Derek Lively. Or he goes to like later in the first. Who do you got up here? You why, get, why would Why would Brooklyn be a lively destination? They have Claxton and yeah, Sharp already. Him. If they want a third big man, they'll get it in unless the second. They move, unless they move on from Darren Sharp, I don't think they will. So maybe Brees here. If he's still on the board. Who do you take? Not Leonard Miller. I think Sacramento probably goes there by this one for it. It's not, what do we got? But Chris Murray? I don't know. Breeze? You run in my room and grab the This is the range where I'm, I would be interested in this. Who? As a Podzimski destination. Odd oh, this early? I see it. I'll give you. I, will it. Not no, I think it's it. Colby Jones. I think they're higher on Colby Jones. They've worked out Colby Jones. I think Colby Jones okay. is Josh right. Josh Hart 2.0. Okay, I'm fine with that. I'm I'm not taking Chris Murray in the first round. I agree. I think Chris Murray's uh, the Kings are going to take him as an uh, as you a favor to his Lively brother. Oh shit! Center. Maybe yeah. yeah. You see that? No, no, no. Uh, MacBook. Yeah. Oh, the MacBook. Chart. Yeah um let's go cool. yeah i think that's where he goes right here i say it's if they want to win now they get james james nanji as their joseph nurkic replacement they probably go by center by committee but if the or maxwell lewis but Kwame smith says he's hearing from people i think or they if they're rebuilding i say they go gg jackson or letter who, who, who do you who, we're on the trail losers Col- we're so colby we, jones and um colby jones and who i colby jones and who Oh, yeah. Man, okay, that's fine. Go, yeah, uh, trailblazers, say Henry. Not Gigi, not Najee. Um, pod, pod, they'll take pod if they're trying to win now. We have them taking Miller at three, keeping the pick just like tentatively. They take pod because they tr- they either keep the pick or trade it in pod regardless. He, even if because Brandon yeah. Miller could be a re- uh, guy that they want to use to help contend. Pod's yeah, another guy that Brees over Pod. If we're going to be honest. Pod's the most NBA ready guy here. Brees is pretty. Brees has an NBA ready body and is a good shooter. Who is who is Lucas saying? Brees Sensba. Ah, uh, is that Bryce? No, it's Brees. Yeah, really? I found this out. Yeah, I found it out like three weeks ago. Yeah, he told me. It's Brees. Yeah, it's Brees. I was every, shocked. Yeah, all the commentators said Brees. What? Yeah, yeah, doesn't it blow your mind? No, yeah. well, that's not even a name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who are you taking? I say uh, Pod or Maxwell Lewis. Yeah, Brees is falling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he can't play defense. I I would kind of be interested in this as my first real Leonard Miller destination. Yeah, but like if they're trying to contend, they don't want someone like Leonard. They don't there. want Leonard if they want to contend. It'd be Brees for shooting or Pod. I, I'll give you Pod, Sarah. Or like yeah. Maxwell Lewis. We, we can go okay, Pod. I'll give you Maxwell Lewis or Pod. Yeah, let's go Pod. I'll give you Pod. Okay, Kings. I think this is the Chris Murray. This is. Where this is I think this okay. is where Chris they. Murray, it's the Twins. I think they want to do the Markeith Marcus Morris thing that the Suns did. I guess if you want to go Chris here, you can. I I just I think Derek Lively just gives them quality of like big man minutes. Yeah, I just thousand percent. I one thousand percent agree. I agree that Derek Lively should be the pick, but in my heart, I say that if Chris Murray falls here, you think you think he Derek Lively falls here, they gotta take him. Let's take let's take Chris Murray at thirty eight. It'll be perfect. Henry, you're with also, me on the Derek Lively train here, Also right? Sacramento. It's ideal. Okay, here I have them taking Maxwell Lewis as part for to be the replacement uh, to help alleviate the loss, or I guess them getting rid of Dylan Brooks. Green yeah, but can Lewis defend? 
Yeah. How does yeah. Lewis literally he's talked a, at the combine how he won Yeah, he talks about how all he does is watch like Draymond Green, Mikhail Bridges. He's a good defender. And he just listed off all at, at, all defensive guys that all he wants to do is play good defense. And he shot forty percent from three or forty one or something like that. So Yeah, I'm I'm a fan of his game. I'm a Maxwell Lewis guy here, I think. We can all agree on that. Pacers right here. We have them taking Cam Whitmore, so I think they go either I think Leonard Williams. Miller. There's I think this is Leonard, Leonard Miller. Miller. I think Leonard, Leonard Miller. Miller. They take a power forward. Is this a Leonard Miller project spot? Let me pull yeah. Because they pull don't it. take they don't take sense spot here. They do no. not. No way. I, I think they take right here Leonard Miller because then he fits next to Miles Turner and Tyrese and Push Duarte and Benedict Matherin. Yeah, 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 I'm okay with that. 27. I say Olivier Maxness Prosper. Who else? No. Besides O Max, who are you looking at? Stop, Breeze. James, James Nanji. James Nanji's still there. And then it starts to get bare bone. Second round, guys. I think. I or Brees. Or Brees. I think Brees or Olivier. Olivier, just in case they lose PJ Washington. Uh, I'm going to say Brees because I'm surprised she's fallen this far. Yeah, what are you too. saying? I'm saying Brees. 28. I'm going with that. I'm saying Olivier Maxness Prosper. Actually, no, they took Jairus Walker, so they take James Nanji to be Walker Kessler's backup. Uh, I'm not. I'm out on Nanji. I'm out on Najee in the top 40, really. To Kwabi and Smith, they need a point guard. To Kwabi and Smith. Ooh. Uh, He's yeah. like a Bones Highland, yeah. Tyrese Maxey. Yeah, they need him. It'd be him or... You like that? that? I, oh, or Marcus yeah. Sasser. Marcus Sasser kind of seems more their bag, but... Andre Jackson? Andre Jackson could he's, go here. He's a powerful... He's, he's, a, point, he's a point wing. No, he's, he's a, a pure wing. wing, dude. He's a pure wing. Yeah, but he averaged like. I see. Can I? Can I? Can no. Can I say this? No. 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 I, no. I, I, no. I, I, say my, say no. My, I told I, you this. Somebody who watched college basketball religiously, UConn season started to turn around when they started having Andre Jackson play point guard for them, and he averaged like six assists. So, so let me Andre tell you, Jackson is a point wing. I see him. I being, know if they take. Him, I see him as like being here. a Royce O'Neal in the NBA, where Royce O'Neal this past year with the Nets, he averaged I think eleven points five rebounds and four assists a game yeah i see that as like an andre jackson like yeah but was yeah, a small forward power forward yeah but andre, andre jackson, jackson is best like in transition like really so neil is not that andre jackson uh, yeah, yeah no, no no you're right. i was saying that stat line i was just saying the stat line i was just saying i was, just, just, I was, just saying, I was the comparing the like playing andre jackson was the primary ball primary ball yeah at times for uconn last year but i see him being like a secondary playmaker in yeah, the yeah, nba yeah, but yeah. on the wing on the wing on the wing small ball four small ball four Small he ball will four. not be a primary ball handler at. Well, do we agree level. he's a small ball four though? Potentially yes, but I don't think you would use him as that. I don't think that's basically. I think they just need a guard here. And he, we had him taking Whitehead and yeah, Walker. Yeah, and it'd be Andre Jackson, Marcus Sasser, Trevor Smith. I just Jackson. see Jackson as a wing. I classify him as a wing. I mean, like he's like they need a bro. Pure... You can't. He's a guy that doesn't have a classification. Okay, he's you can't a, really. I want a pure anything. guard. I want a pure guard like Sasser or like. Andre, who do we have? Utah, Utah is taking Jarris and who? In the strike. Dariq. Jarris and Dariq Whitehead. Ooh. Because we gave uh, you the Dariq maybe Whitehead. We do, maybe we do need a pure guard. Maybe we just we need a Marcus pure Sasser guard then. like Sasser or maybe Smith. We just take Sasser. Sasser gives them the defense, oh. and if they want to win, Taquavian's a little, it takes 10 three pointers a night, though. <laughs> no, I, I, I agree that it's Sasser or. Jackson, I would honestly like to like like to um, defer to Luca because I think that Jackson would be an interesting fit in Utah. I agree. I agree with Jackson being an interesting fit, but I still think Marcus Sasser. I'm going Marcus. I, I, I agree with them. Yeah. I, I just think Marcus Sasser, like like, because they need a they need a pure Pacers are back. Like on, Andre Jackson's Pacers are back on the clock, and this is where I could see him going. They could either go it's like who we had them going last with Leonard Miller and Cam Whitmore. I think either Olivier Max and his No, they took Cam Whitmore. Then they go James Nanji as the backup uh, for uh, Miles Turner. No, I think that if they were to go backup center here, I'd rather be Trace Jackson Davis. Fuck no, he's no. a fucking late second round pick, dude. That guy might not get drafted. Pick. He's a mid to late second round pick. 
They do not go trace Jackson Davis here. Gigi Jackson, if they want to go a potential guy. I, I would still rather. I'm just saying, like, that's how low I am on Najee. I'd rather be Trace because at least he can pass. Or what about Vuk? Let's all disagree to agree and do take Vuk right here to stretch the floor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Come on now. Okay. So it's probably realistically, it, it could realistically, like, it's probably going to be Najee. Yeah, Najee without... you know, Jackson destination. That's what I'm, that's what we're saying, realistically. Yeah. But you guys want to do Jackson? I would say Najee, but I would say Najee. That's why I, I think Jackson there. goes to the Celtics in the beginning of the second. Yeah, and I and I want that to happen so badly. I think it's a great fit. So I'm gonna go. The other with person the other Najee. person I think would be an interesting fit in Indiana, whether it's twenty nine or thirty two, would be Kobe Brown. Mm. You think he goes that high? No. But I think he'd be an interesting fit in Indiana. So GG, GG or uh, Najee here. Who would you take? What are we taking? Are we with the Clippers or Pacers? Pacers. Pacers. Still with God, Pacers. not not GG. So Najee, because like or Olivier Maxness Prosper. But they took Cam Whitmore. Yeah, but Cam's you know, a wing. I, I'm Olivier's a point 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 for I'm took okay. Leonard Miller. They took Leonard. Which Miller. one? Which one, Henry? Oh, I, I'd be okay with Omax. Okay. Omax, because Omax they is took the... Leonard Miller too, though. Okay, they, okay. Leonard Miller's a point forward. Omax is a combo forward. I'm just saying they wouldn't take him if they took Cam and Leonard Miller because they already took small forward and a power forward, and that's what Omax would realistically play. And they already took. Cam I would Max. never ever want Leonard Miller on this Pacers team, taking possessions yeah. away from Terry Halliburton. Oh, what about Taquavi and Smith? They need defense though, so bad. And Marcus Sasser's gone. Julian Phillips. No, no he's not a first round pick. I say Olivier Max is prosperous. I guess just go Omax here. Just do it. I, I'll give you. I don't really see how he. Need James Nanji to the Clippers. Yeah. They need a backup for Zubats. We already had. We already had them taking Leonard Miller and Cam Whitmore, but James not. I guess Omax. Bobby. Bobby. No, not Bobby. It's James Nanji. You like Bobby? If they want a project, dude. I do. Him. Yeah. I, I was. I'm high. not. A, I'm not a fan. I, 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 he did not impress me at Wake Forest at all. I'm just not. Why? A fan. Dude, he didn't want he barely fucking played. And he didn't really like show any ability to like score outside of like the occasional like roll and like the but like the jumper, I guess, like yeah, I guess he, he was like a what, like a low I don't even think he was a 30% three point shooter. I think he was like, I think he hovered right around 30, maybe a little Yeah, it's it, not good. Not good. This is like what I'm saying. It's like Bobby did not impress me at Wake. He couldn't he didn't get minutes and struggled to do much with the minutes he got on a team that was terrible. So But his instincts are just like clear as day to me. Are they? I think he's a like a crisp passer and like a good decision maker. We'll give yeah. you Bobby. I'm kind of high on Bobby. I'm not high on him, <laughs> but I'm not at all. I I honestly don't think he. I, I don't think he should go this high. But maybe a team sees like the frame and they want to project. But I'm not. Dude, high. I I I predicted Santi Aldama being a first round pick. He did not. Im- Bobby did not impress me at Wake Forest. I told you for months Aldama would be a first round. Pick. I know, but that's not what we're talking about. This is Bobby. I didn't have a. I didn't have a care. <laughs> have a feeling out. Bobby does not impress me. James Nanji makes more sense to me at this spot than Bobby. All right, I feel pretty good about this. But for the most part, it's a good mock draft. Maybe Bobby does. Maybe Bobby proves me wrong and has a good career, but I don't know. I'm going to save this bad boy. All right. Before we... However this video ends up being edited, thank you for watching. Luke, this has been the longest mock draft I ever did, but I feel very proud of it. I feel very proud. We went yeah, back and forth. I feel proud I mean, of most of the picks. We'll, we'll do a longer one, one better organized, maybe quicker. One Henry, those, how do you feel about this? What pick do you hate thing. the most? What pick do I hate the most? I mean, Size Leonard Miller for the Pacers just frustrates me. Um, I also will say that he hates Leonard I am going to be among the lowest public opinion on Jairus Walker. <laughs> yeah. I hope, I hope he and makes you say, eat your uh, words. Yeah, I'd say the worst pick in this draft is probably Bobby. Besides <laughs> that... No, I think it's Dariq Whitehead at 16. Yeah, okay, that one's also one that I'm I'm kidding, I'm kidding, no. I I'm think... kidding, I'm kidding. The Dariq Whitehead one is actually not that bad. Um, I think, but... honestly, the worst pick for me... Bobby. <laughs> nah. I, I mean, it is, but... I really don't like... I don't like Derek Lively as a prospect. I honestly just... See, I think he's just a good value, like, late in the first round, but you wouldn't take him anything above, like, 23... I personally think the pick I don't like the most is Asar. I don't like Asar. I think I would have taken 
either Whitmore or Jarris or Hendricks there. That's the one you guys both convinced me there. I think I got on that one. Yeah, I think it's a SAR for me. Like realistically, a SAR is the one I didn't like. And you guys both liked him right there. No, yeah, because we bullied you in the taking him. You guys did bully. Just like, like how we bullied Henry and Ajaris, and you guys bullied me and a bully Clinton and them in the first <laughs> round. Oh my god. That kid averaged five points a game away for us. Those five points were righteous. Those five points were valuable in helping them not make the, <laughs> those five points were valuable in helping them not make the tournament. The I next time the next time we convene for a draft, I will have a very detailed opinion on what the Pistons should do at five, because that is just an absolute mess. Oh my to god. Me, yeah. That the oh yeah, I agree. What the fuck? Like they got screwed over. They if they had one of the top three picks, they'd have been fine, but now we don't know what the fuck they're gonna well, do. Well, just the way they're constructing their roster and Cade being hurt throws a huge yeah. wrench. But it's also just whack. Like, like you're gonna have Duran and Wiseman and try to develop them both and compete. I don't even know how it's possible. It's not possible to compete right now. It's it's actually impossible, I think. They can't compete right now. They need to realize that they can't compete right now. They're not going to be able to compete unless they trade some of the young guys and get like I don't know, fuck Dame or something. <laughs> but like, that's like, not like, 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 like. No, not... they're waiting till John Collins and DeAndre Hunter and Clint Capella are trade are being traded, and they're going to take all three of them, and then they're going to just have Clint Capella mentor all four other bigs, and then they'll have John Collins at power forward and DeAndre Hunter. And it'll be the most clusterfuck thing ever. It'll be the Piss Hawks. You know, with the new CBA trade rules, John Collins is more tradable than ever. And Detroit is, is it... a decent. I think John Collins ends up, you know, a place really loves John Collins. Like they're obsessed with John. The Jazz. The Jazz. The Jazz, the jazz, the jazz love John Collins. Oh they they supposedly called up the Hawks frequently this past year. They love John they Collins. They love. They, they personally think. They envision like the ideal wow. like th- like front court for them is Walker Kessler, John Collins, Larry Markman. What'd you say? Damn. To yeah, think yeah, that yeah. I told Danny Ainge that I loved him. Yes. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, Danny Ainge, big John Collins fans. First off, can we talk about the fact that the Celtics got John Collins? That would be so perfect. The Celtics got John Collins next to Jason yeah, Tatum and Jalen Brown. Nice. That would be a good nice. fit. Yeah, that'd be a good fit. Bob Williams, John Collins, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and fucking either Marcus Smart, Derek White, and Malcolm Brogdon. They probably have to trade one of them, but like they would trade one of them. And if there's a guy that I want to trade, it's Malcolm Brogdon. You guys, that is just a, why would they trade any of those guards? Because they um they realize that like they won games without Malcolm Brogdon and they're like well he's just kind of like extra and he, like he played like shit towards the end of the year yeah and, and like he's awesome. making twenty something like Derek, Derek like, White Derek and Marcus Smart are more impact winning players and they're on cheaper deals and, and long term yeah. and Derek White was the best player so like financially players. it just makes most sense and I think Mark Malcolm Brogdon's an expiring which makes him even yeah more the the price of Brogdon is, is true like that they just. Like, I don't, it regret, makes sense. I don't regret the trade. No, the no, no. What we gave up was the, what ended up being like the They just the noticed it just did, it, they it, won two games in the finals without him. Um, and then now paying Pritchard's demanding a trade. So you either trade both Pritchard and Brogdon or you tell Pritchard, hey, we're trading Brogdon and you're going to take Brogdon's role. 